if you let yourself daydream and fantasize and you never make that daydream actionable and you never take the steps to push yourself to make it happen, it won't happen. Your life will pass you by just like that. You deserve to dream. You deserve to find joy. But you have to still put in the work to get yourself that joy, to schedule that joy. No one's going to make you happy but you. You still, at the end of the day, even if it's a good thing, even if it's a fun thing, even if it's something that you want to do, you have to be the one to do it. You have to schedule your joy. Hello, good morning, and welcome to yet another episode of Ari's Overshares, the series in which I, your host Ari, overshare on all matters of the heart, the mind, and matters of my life. So it's Saturday, July 30th, and today is a special one. I've been participating in Screenless Saturday so far today. It's pretty early, it's only 10 a.m., uh, but I think that's proof that the screenless Saturday aspect of things is working well because I never record these episodes this early in the day. It's usually reserved for later in the day when I'm a little bit calmer and honestly, admittedly, I have pushed it off until I can push it off no further. Uh, this is kind of ironic, by the way, but this phone is on airplane mode and I don't really count the camera as a screen. So I guess technically this isn't a screenless Saturday, but I'll let myself slide. So what's new? What else is going on in my life? Well, in a few weeks, uh, kind of like the middle to end of August, I'm actually going to be traveling to Utah for the first time. And it's actually the point of this video. The whole story of, of today's video is about that trip and Utah this, this trip has been something that's been kind of percolating in my head for a little bit of time. I knew that I wanted to take some form of an adventurous trip. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. This was all kind of born of a few different uh, factors or variables. Number one, I had days off that I've needed to use at work. Number two, I've been feeling pretty overwhelmed and not necessarily burnt out at work, but it's been a really long time since I've taken a proper amount of time off and done something to kind of rest and recharge and sort of downshift and move away from work. And I know myself well enough to understand that taking a week off and going to some sort of tropical resort or paradise and sitting on a beach and drinking daiquiris would be like the antithesis of who I am and what would bring me joy, I would maybe enjoy that for like a day and then I'd get really, really agitated really fast. So I wanted to do something that was going to really push me and push me out of my comfort zone because I've understood or I've come to understand about myself and, and my life a few things. Number one being, this is the type of person that I am. I am a seeker of adventure, of thrill. And number two being that I understand that the things, the trips, the experiences that I most remember and remember most fondly in my life are the ones that were a little too grand, a little bit past my threshold for what I felt like I could tolerate or handle well and manage well. Things that push me out of my comfort zone, like my trip to Colombia, which was the first time that I had traveled internationally in over a decade, or my trip out to Colorado Springs to climb Garden of the Gods with zero climbing experience outdoor at the time. And these things that just felt so intimidating either before I left for the trip or while I was kind of going through these adventures they are the ones that pushed me out of my comfort zone maybe felt a little uncomfortable in the moment um, but at the end of the trip being able to say to look back and say I did that I, I got through that I evolved and I grew and I realized that I can do a lot of these things that maybe intimidate me and the point of this video right now is not necessarily just to talk about my ideal adventure but it kind of sets the stage for you it sets the scene it sets the scene for this idea that i've i've started to realize about my myself and maybe life in general not just my life but life in general which is that time moves by really really fast i think time moves quicker than any of us want it to we never feel like we have enough time in life 
even if you feel like you have a good handle on things like I do and I live in the present moment and I'm trying to do all of these different things, finding balance is immensely challenging, immensely difficult, and I have a thousand interests, which I don't know how you know comparable that is to most people out there, but at any given time, I think kayaking would be cool. And I'm filming this video right now, but I would also love to be watching Stranger Things or sitting outside and smoking a cigar and reading or riding my motorcycle. And I literally cannot do all of those things at the same time. So I have to pick. And that's hard. Um, but the concept of Utah was really born out of understanding that if I'm going to utilize my time, I want to utilize it in a way that is going to honor me the most and is going to make me feel the best about my use of that time that I have. And so I knew I wanted to do something that was going to push me out of my comfort zone. I knew I wanted to sign up for something daunting and something risky. And I loved that feeling. And this right here is where we get into the actual point of the video so I can stop giving you context or background. See, I want to talk about the power of the daydream. The daydream and the concept of dreaming in general is beautiful. It's poetic and it can create a wonderful sense of joy for you, right? Like if I just ask you to think about, you know, if you had a week to do whatever you wanted, what would that fantasy week look like? Just don't set any limitations on yourself. Maybe it's flying out to Las Vegas for a week with all your friends and getting hammered and going to the casino. Maybe it's doing an all-inclusive trip to the Caribbean. Maybe it's something like what I'm doing and pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and going camping and climbing and just doing this whole massive solo adventure trip. It doesn't matter what that looks like for you because it's going to be very specific to anybody who comes across this video. But I asked myself that question, if I have a finite amount of time, how can I use it the best and what does that look like? And when I started to ask myself that question, I started to build this bucket list trip. I started to think about, well, like if I had a finite time here, just in general in life, what are the kinds of trips or uses of my time and my money that I'd be like, yeah, that was worth it. That, that, was, that was truly worth it. And after I kind of had started to triangulate a rough sense of what that looked like, I said, I want to venture and I want to push myself out of my comfort zone and I want to take risks. And I was like, ooh, remember that time that you said that you want to go on a South African safari? Yeah. And remember that time that you said that you wanted to go cage diving with great white sharks? Yeah. And remember all of these things? Remember when you went climbing and how amazing that was? Yeah. Yeah. And so I got myself into the daydream. I got myself into the fantasy of envisioning and imagining this dream reality of how I would spend my time with no limitations. And then I came across the struggle. The struggle, which to me I'm realizing flows through every aspect of my life. Not just the things that I don't want to do, but even the things that I do want to do. And it is that it still takes work to make your dreams a reality, which maybe sounds kind of cliche or kind of obvious, but I miss the mark on this all the time. You see, I got to the point where I, th I knew that I wanted to do the adventure trip, but the problem with, with the daydreaming and the problem with creating this fantasy was that as I started to envision myself experiencing these dreams, and I embodied the feelings that would be elicited or generated by doing these amazing things, I started in my body and in my mind to cultivate dopamine and joy and that feeling, even though I hadn't actually done anything about my fantasy, even though I hadn't done anything about my daydream. And when it came time to realizing that I didn't have that much time to spare from creating this concept of adventure to figuring out what state, to figuring out what city, to ultimately planning the logistics and then itinerarying the trip. It took a lot of work and I'm still not even done with the logistics of this trip. I still don't have my lodging booked. 
I still have two open days in in Moab where I'm going to be that I don't have anything planned for yet. And I've had to truly scramble to bring my dreams into reality. Even though, even though this is something that I'm volunteering for, even though this is something that I do truly want to do, and even though it's something that's creating joy. You see, this I'm realizing is the problem potentially or the peril of the daydream. Because if you let yourself run wild with the beautiful, imaginative, narrative way that we have as human beings to kind of conjure up these stories and daydream and think and and feel vicariously just by thinking about things without actually taking action on them, nothing will happen. And It's maybe a no-brainer, but I think something that has really shocked me is to realize that I do still really need to schedule my joy. I have actually been kind of blown away in a not good way, like it's shocking in a bad way, with the amount of stubbornness that I felt within my own body to go from imagining it to researching it and then to go from researching it to pulling the trigger and actually booking the flights and finding a rental car and I want to climb and canyoneer and river raft and these are things that I'm grateful that I've already scheduled and and figured out but it was just so easy when all I had to do was imagine myself sitting on a spire at 350 feet in the air being like yeah that's a cool version of Ari. Like, I love that idea of me. Like, just somebody who's just gonna, you know, fly to a new city in a new state and and be alone for a week and do all this cool stuff. That's a really cool, awesome, more like wise and 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 future version of myself. And it just lived there. And it would have lived there if I didn't bring myself to the reality of this moment and been like, okay, great, you have it. You know what you want, so do it. Like, why aren't you doing it? And then that's when I kind of started to think about, like, well, why am I waiting? And it's because the peril of daydreaming is so real. Like, when you start to just let yourself live in the fantasy of the dream, you start to feel all of the rosy, wonderful emotions that are elicited by just fantasizing about things without actually going through the friction or the process of of making them happen. And I was just really shocked that this was happening for me, even in a case like this where it's totally voluntary and it's 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 joy, right? Like this is a vacation. It's gonna be joyful. It's not doing my taxes or even making a dream happen that's just really uncomfortable it's like all good things and yet here i am still dragging my feet and that's the peril that's the danger of of letting yourself daydream because if you let yourself daydream and fantasize and you never make that daydream actionable and you never take the steps to push yourself to make it happen, it won't happen. Your life will pass you by just like that. You deserve to dream. You deserve to find joy. But you have to still put in the work to get yourself that joy, to schedule that joy. No one's going to make you happy but you. You still, at the end of the day, even if it's a good thing, even if it's a fun thing, even if it's something that you want to do, you have to be the one to do it. You have to schedule your joy. And I'm realizing that this goes way beyond just a vacation. When it comes to becoming who you want to be, the difference I'm realizing between who you aspire to be and who you are is just choosing to embody the version of yourself that you want to be. I literally said three weeks ago before I had done any of this, any research on this, any even narrowing it down to Utah, I said, I know that I want to be somebody who's more 
adventurous or really what I said to myself was like in my heart of hearts I feel like I am more adventurous than the life that I am living I feel not just like oh I want to go and do more cool things I, I felt like there is a disconnect between who I felt in my soul body in my heart of hearts to be and the way that I live my life and don't get me wrong on a daily basis I'm pretty happy with the choices that I make if I just woke up today and went for a walk and went to the gym like I'm still kind of honoring myself but it's not really pushing myself in a grand way and I I feel like I owe myself more of that because I do truly believe that I am more adventurous than the life that I have been embodying and that's how this trip was born because I recognize that there is a disconnect and the way that I solve that disconnect is simply by signing up for adventure. I don't need to sit in a journal and write about how I feel like I'm not living that life. I just need to act, right? Mood follows action. Embodiment follows action. Identity follows action. Everything follows in the footsteps of action. So if I say that I'm an adventurous person and I say that I want to do more adventurous things, I have to schedule the adventure. If I say that I want to be more fit, I have to be the one to get to the gym. If I say that I want to be a better friend, I have to be the one that's going to schedule the catch-up. If I say that I want to be a better me, I have to do the work to be a better me. I just was shocked that this went to my joy place too. I was shocked that... It wasn't just effortless to book the things that will make me happy, but it's true. I think we get in this mode, and I'm realizing this, I think, as I get further into adulthood. I'm 25, and life sort of has this kind of adult maturing cadence, but I'm still a kid, and I still want to honor my inner child by doing this fun, adventurous stuff and and branch out and explore, and I'm nowhere near settling settling down or settling in any capacity of my life and I hope to God that I won't be for a really long time but it's just this feeling that I'm realizing like it takes work to honor yourself even when it comes to to doing the things that you know will bring you joy it's not going to just fall from the sky I'm not going to just you know blink and meditate and all of a sudden have an envelope that comes in the mail and says here's your seven day trip to utah we knew exactly what you wanted to do and what would make sense for you and it's all just happening for you no you make it happen for you so schedule your joy schedule the things that you say that you want otherwise they won't happen and if you let yourself just like live in the daydream and the fantasy world that's that's a really dangerous place to be in because Whether you realize it or not, you're letting yourself feel a lot of good feeling things, right? Like dopamine and ecstasy and maybe a little euphoria and a little bit of, ooh, that's sexy. Like, think about myself being so daring. But you're doing all that without actually absorbing any of the risk. And you're doing that without actually living in that reality. And that's a dangerous place to be if you are just kind of fantasizing about who you could be. The thing is, like, fantasizing and daydreaming and trying to have a goal and an aspiration for who you'd like to be is necessary and that's amazing and it's beautiful but you can become that person if you just take the steps towards them towards her towards him whatever you identify as just go so i'm going to utah and it's been admittedly really shocking to me how much effort it's taken energy wise to reel in my stubborn little brain that just wanted to live in fantasy land and book my flights and figure out which airport i should fly into and which rental car company i should go with and how many days i want to dedicate to certain cities and what activities i really want to do it's been kind of hard admittedly um but You have to do this if you want to live a joyful life. There's no workaround. This is the shortcut to becoming who you want to be and to be living the life that you say that you want to be living. So what's stopping you? I hope to God it's not yourself. 
thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate you holding space for my riff. I have a lot of new subscribers coming on because my motorcycle videos went mini viral, which is hilarious. And I kind of wanted to make a video on um, just kind of letting that grow and not changing the content um, or the context of this channel to kind of follow those views. But um, yeah, this must be kind of interesting for anybody who's subscribed thinking that they're going to get more motorcycle content. And it's just like, who's this girl talking about the way that she has to schedule joy? And the fact that scheduling joy for her is um, just flying herself to the desert alone in the middle of August. Love you. See you next week. <laughs> Bye.